Hi, I'm Brian. I look like this. But to Apple, I look like this. If you and I chat over FaceTime or Zoom while I'm wearing the Vision Pro, this is the version of me that you're going to see. It's my persona, a 3D avatar of me that allows me to teleconference with the headset. When the Vision Pro arrives, one of the first things you'll do is enroll your hands and face using the device's front-facing cameras. The process is more or less the same as the one the iPhone uses to enroll Face ID. When we shot these videos, Persona was still in beta, and at the moment there are still a number of kinks to work out in order to assure that most users don't look like a giant uncanny thumb. It's one of the rougher elements of a product that is otherwise largely well thought out. It had better be. By the time the Vision Pro was announced on stage at last year's Worldwide Developer Conference, the hardware had reportedly been in the works for around eight years. The Vision Pro is, at once, the best example of extended reality consumer hardware and a reminder of its current limitations. So much of the work went into the optical experience, as well as providing the system 4K resolution. The results are impressive. You can watch an ultra high res movie on the big screen from the comfort of your living room couch. The Vision Pro also has the most convincing spatial orientation of any consumer headset I've tried. That's coupled with solid hand tracking. Pinch your fingers together to pick up a window and it stays there even as you walk around the room. This version of spatial computing really shines when using the Mac virtual display feature. Here, the system effectively works as a 4K monitor, displaying your desktop's contents as you navigate using a real-world keyboard and mouse. These Bluetooth-connected peripherals can also be used to interface directly with the Vision Pro, bypassing the need for a separate Mac. Game controllers can be wirelessly paired as well. Presently, the majority of the games on the system are versions built for iPadOS. All iPad apps are instantly compatible with the Vision Pro without having to do any additional dev work. Of course, for the best experience that most fully utilizes the device's eye and hand tracking, developers will want to build something custom. When the Vision Pro hit Apple stores last Friday, it arrived with more than 600 optimized apps. It's no iPhone app store, but it's a good start given the entirely new paradigm for Apple. Some big names like Netflix are, however, conspicuously missing. Most of the system interfacing is accomplished through eyes and hands. Look at an object to highlight it and pinch your fingers together to select it. Pinch with both hands before pulling them apart to zoom into the app. Pinch and swipe to scroll, you get the hang of it pretty quickly. The Vision Pro is also a content capturing device. Meet Juniper. I shot this 3D video footage of my rabbit using the headset's front-facing cameras. The Vision Pro is also the best place to watch back that footage in 3D. Aside from the current state of personas, the two elephants in the room here are the $3,500 price tag and, yes, the battery pack. The inclusion of the latter feels markedly unApple like No doubt the team behind the Vision Pro attempted to incorporate the battery into the headset itself, but doing so would have made it too hot and too heavy. Instead, you'll probably spend most of your time with the battery in your pocket. You can also plug a USB-C cable into the battery to charge it during use. The Vision Pro is an impressive piece of hardware by nearly every metric. It's way too expensive to be considered mainstream, but it offers a fantastic glimpse into what mixed reality can and should be.